Does your wheel thrown pottery make you want to throw up? Is your hand building horrible? Well, fear not. Today, I'm going to rescue you by showing you how to make a coil pot the easy way. I'm going to highlight the three steps that are important for coil building. And more importantly, I'm gonna show you the three critical pinches that you need to make coil pottery. The only tools I'm gonna to be using today are a gourd rib, a smooth stone, a knife, an old credit card, a small piece of plywood, and a water bowl. Let's get started right now. I start by just creating a small slab of clay to form the base of the pot. And the size that I make it, you know, depends on the size of the pot that I'm making. So in this case, uh, maybe, you know, six inches across. And I usually look at making it about a quarter inch thick. as a good standard thickness for the pot. Now, once I've got that slab made, I'm gonna cut it out into a circle. And so in this case, I'm just using a bowl from my kitchen as a template. Working on a small piece of plywood like this isn't absolutely necessary, but it makes it real easy to rotate the pot as you work. So it makes your job a little easier. I'm ready to roll my first coil. I think the only thing I can tell you advice wise for this is nice long strokes on that when you're rolling the coil. And then you wanna look at places where it's fatter and press those down so that it's an even thickness all the way across or as close to even as you can get it and wide long strokes are gonna make sure you don't have a flat side. Then I just place it right on top of the very edge of my slab and here's where the first of the three important pinches I'm gonna teach you today come in. This first pinch I'm gonna show you is the bonding pinch. The purpose of this pinch is just to attach the coil to the base of the pot. All this is is a firm downward pinch from the edge of the coil into the base below. Attaching those two pieces of clay, turning those two pieces of clay into essentially one piece of clay. It's really important that these pieces get bonded well, otherwise it can crack later when it dries or in the firing right along those coil lines. And once your coil is bonded all the way around on the outside, you can come around and start pinching that coil thinner. Some people make their coils the thickness that they want the walls of their pot to be. But I make my coil quite a bit thicker than I want the walls of my pot to be. I usually roll my coils about the thickness of my thumb, but I usually pinch the walls of the pot down to be about a quarter inch thick. Now this is the second of those three important pinches I told you about. The first was the bonding pinch that attached the coil to the base. This is the flat pinch. I'm just going around and pinching my thumb and forefingers together, thinning out the walls of the pot. I'm paying special attention to the thickness of it so that if it's very thick, I'm pinching more, and if it's approaching the thinness I want the walls of the pot to be, I'm pinching less or not at all. All right, let's take a break. I know this can get a little tedious at this point, so stick with me. We are focusing on the fundamentals of making a coil pot here, so as we go forward, things are gonna speed up, I promise you. So, get your mind off of it for a minute. Here are some pots that I've made. These are all built using the coil methods. Really the sky's the limit on what you can do. All right, let's get back to the project. Once I've pinched that coil thin all the way around, it's time to roll another coil. And again, just being careful to keep it nice and even, long strokes from the tips of my fingers to the balls of my hand, playing special attention that it's even all the way through. And I'm shooting for about the thickness of my thumb here before I use it. Now I put the coil in place and again, begin with that bonding pinch, pressing my forefinger down and in, attaching the coil to the base of the pot. Now again, I'm going to pinch that coil thinner because the coil was made the thickness of my thumb, but I want the pot walls to be about a quarter inch thick. And so I'm just applying that flat pinch and trying to thin the walls of that pot. Now there's a little bit of the compression pinch being done here. And the compression pinch is the third of those three important pinches I'm gonna talk about. If you just go around and flat pinch the walls of a pot, the diameter of the pot gets wider and wider as you flat pinch. And so in order to keep those walls vertical, at this time, I'm just making sort of a cylinder. And so in order to keep those walls vertical, I'm compressing, that is, I'm pulling the walls of the pot together between my two hands. And I'll show you more of that compression pinch in a little bit. Now I'm using my gourd rib and I'm just smoothing the inside, paying special attention to the seams where those coils were attached, smoothing that all out, and also pressing the walls of the pot out some. So up to this point, I formed it as sort of a cylinder, but I'm not making a cylinder, I'm making an actual pot. 
So I'm using the rounded shape of the gourd to press out those walls into a more rounded, desirable shape for the pot. At the base where I attach the first coil, I've got a little bit of an indentation. And so I'm just gonna add a little extra clay in there to fill that in and make it stronger and give it a nice rounded shape. Also later, when I trim the bottom of the pot with that excess there, I won't worry about cutting right through the walls of the pot. At this point, I'm focusing on shaping the bottom of the pot. I'm just using that gourd rib tool to press out the rounded form that I want. And I'm using my other hand on the outside to keep from pushing it too far out of shape. And now that I've pushed out and shaped the inside of the pot, it's time to come around with that gourd tool and scrape and smooth the outside of the pot. And so I'll just work my way all the way around the pot, scraping and smoothing. And now another coil is rolled out, laid on top of the pot, and now I'm using that bonding pinch to attach that to the base, working my way all the way around, bonding that coil to the pot. And now pinching that coil thinner using the flat pinch. And now using that gourd rib on the inside of the pot, using the rounded shape of the gourd to shape the rounded shape of the pot, pressing it out against my hand, also paying special attention to that coil seam, smoothing it out, obliterating that seam where the coil was attached. And then again, scraping the outside smooth, making sure everything is smooth and even before I add another coil. Pop quiz. Let's see how well you've been paying attention. What? You didn't know you were supposed to be taking notes? Well, we'll go ahead with the quiz and see how you do. The question is, what are the three steps to coil building? The answers are, one, attach a coil, two, pinch the coil thinner, and three, scrape smooth. I'm a little disappointed in your performance on this, but since you didn't know you were supposed to be taking notes, I'll let you make it up in the next quiz on the three important pinches. And here's where I wanna focus on that compression pinch. The compression is the third of the three important pinches in coil pottery making. With the compression pinch, you're grabbing the pot wall firmly with both hands and then pulling it together. That is pulling the two hands together, actually making a small pleat in the clay as you make the diameter of that rim smaller, bringing it in. And that's important because if you just go around and flat pinch, the walls of the pot keep going out and out and out like a flower pot. The compression pinch allows you to start bringing those walls back in into a smaller and smaller diameter. Now I'm just using that gourd rib tool to smooth out that shoulder that I created by compressing the edge. So it's just kind of bumpy and crusty there where I turned the pot in. So I'm just using that wet rib tool to kind of smooth out that edge. So that's all ready to add the next coil. And now I'm pinching that coil thinner. I'm doing mostly a flat pinch, but also a fair amount of compression pinching here to make sure that those walls continue to come in. This is a good way to illustrate that compression pinch. As I work my way around, you can see my two hands pinching that coil thinner, but also pulling together, making small pleats in the clay. Here I'm using a wet gourd rib tool to scrape and smooth the outside of the pot obliterating that coil line and just smoothing it out. Notice that while I'm scraping on the outside, my other hand is on the inside, holding that wall in place so that it doesn't get pushed out of shape by all this vigorous scraping. If you enjoy learning to make coil pottery, then you might enjoy the Ancient Potters Club. It's a group that I've organized that meets every Wednesday night for an hour via Zoom to make pottery together. Every month we have a different project. Then every Wednesday in that month, we meet together to work on our project and get it finished up by the end of the month. If this sounds interesting to you, I'll put the link on the screen and down in the doobly-doo. Now back to our project. Since I'm getting ready to add a neck to this jar, I wanna make sure that the opening on top is fairly rounded. And so I'm gonna bring my knife in and just trim that edge a little bit so that the opening is a nice even circle so that the neck comes up evenly all the way around. This coil will form the neck of the jar. 
And so instead of laying it on the inside, as I did the last coil, I'm kind of setting it on top. That way I can get more vertical distance out of this coil. And now I'm pinching that coil thinner. Because the opening of the jar is getting smaller, I can't get my whole hand in there. So I basically have two fingers on the inside and then my thumbs on the outside. I'm doing a lot of flat pinching and compression pinching to make this jar neck come up and in the way I want it to. And now I'm scraping and smoothing the outside with my gourd rib tool and making sure I completely obliterate the coil seam and any other bumps or cracks that are in the pot wall. Now this will be my last coil. And because I don't need a lot more height, I'll make it quite small. So for the rim, I usually just take the knife and kind of eyeball the rim, trim down any high spots, add small bits of clay to any low spots, just kind of get it visually roughly even. And then I'll just get the rim really wet and just work it with my fingers until it's smooth and even all the way around. All right, that's how you make the pot. I still have to let this rest a little bit and let the clay firm up, and then I'm gonna come back later. I'm gonna scrape it smoother and polish it, and I'll show you that too. I'm gonna put a piece of cotton cloth over the top so it can dry slowly because I'm in Tucson and the relative humidity is quite low, so it might dry faster than I want it to. And then I'll come back in an hour or so and work on this a little more. So now that the pot has had time to sit and rest and firm up, got a little bit of rigidity to it, I'm coming in with this credit card or old hotel room key and I'm just scraping the surface of the pot. That allows me to smooth it out, get rid of any bumps or divots, just make it a nice, even, smooth surface. Now I'm just gonna use my knife to trim off this ugly, clunky looking foot that I have. This is just the result of coil building from a flat platform. So I'm just gonna trim it down so that it has the same angle as the bottom of the pot coming into that flat surface. So I'm gonna cut off a fair amount of clay. This is where it was important for me to add that extra clay on the inside when I first started. Because I added that clay on the inside, I'm not worried about cutting all the way through the wall of the pot. Pop quiz. Here's your chance to make up your score from the last quiz. What are the three important pinches for coil building? The answer is one, the bonding pinch, two, the flat pinch, and three, the compression pinch. Much better. Now let's see how the pot is scraped smooth and finished. Now that that foot is all trimmed, I'm gonna come back with that credit card tool and just scrape it all smooth so that the walls of the pot are rather consistent all the way down to the bottom. There's a few little divots in here, and when I find those, I'll just take small balls of wet clay and push them into those holes, making sure the bottom of the pot is all even and smooth. And now that I've got it all scraped smooth, I'm just gonna let it sit and firm up a little more before I come back and do the last step of smoothing the surface of the pot, the stone smoothing. This process is called stone smoothing, and it's just using a wet stone on a leather hard clay to smooth it out. Going over the still damp clay with a wet stone just smooths it out like troweling concrete and makes a nice smooth surface that's ready to be painted or slipped or whatever kind of decoration I'm gonna put on it later. Using the steps I outlined in this video, you could create any form you could imagine. If you're hoping to do more coil pottery, make sure you watch this video right over here which is gonna give you some very important tips that you're gonna need for coil building with clay. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.